really foul on you. So, because some of the list mm -hmm. items mm -hmm. had two lines and some of them had three lines, Yes. it was centering them based on all of the lines. So, like... Uh, location and phone number might be straight, but because there was only two lines on email, email was like kind of cockeyed a little bit. It was like shifted down because it was centering them based on the size of the information. Even though they were all separate list items, I couldn't get the titles to line up. Would those titles line up if they were displayed in line? Uh, this, I think, is what I'll have to see. Because okay. yeah, I, 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 it's just it's still it's still just not registering. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, it's just it, it, I just I have a total disconnect um, on that. Um, but yeah, we we can look at that in lab. All right. So what what is it I want to demonstrate about this? What I want to demonstrate is with the list view, it sort of nudges you and gives you a head start. So you want a list view? Fine. All right. Uh, you, you, want a, you want an unordered list? Fine. It creates and it gives you some things by default. Puts all the fields in it, creates the UL and the LIs, you're good to go. With a repeater view, you don't get any of that. You just get like, well, here you go, fellas. Here it is. The templates, go and edit them, all right? Go and make it work, all right? And it's up to you to make it work. Um, and again, that can be good or bad. Uh, it's good if you really have some design that is very specific that doesn't fit into any of the sort of uh, built-in models in the list view. Um, so if, if you have some really sort of off-the-wall design, then, then by all means, go and use uh, a repeater. But if you want one of the standard things, which I would think in most many cases you would, use the list view. Uh, my own bias for this is if I was doing this, I probably would use list, view, list views an awful lot. All right? And I would use grid views if I just wanted a very, very simple, straightforward table. All right? And I would use a repeater sort of as like my last uh, resort if, if I had some real specific needs that none of the other ones worked for. There is uh, the implication that some of these are editable and some of these are not editable. Uh, list views, for example, are editable, whereas repeaters I don't believe are editable. At any rate, let's go and add a repeater here and see what you get. So I have my repeater there. Choose data source. Let's go and configure that repeater. Nothing there to configure, right? You don't have, it doesn't give you anything. This is kind of like, all right, you want to do it yourself? Fine, go and do it yourself. I, I guess I'm making Visual Studio sound sarcastic. Uh, I don't mean it to. Uh, what it's saying is, if you pick repeater, then it's on you to define everything. All right, it's on you to define everything. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go into the source view, and then with the repeater I can define a bunch of templates. All right? So I could define an alternating item template or an item template. I could define a header template. The header would go at the very top of it. So let's play around with this and let's customize it. I'm going to create an item template, and I'm just, for laughs, I'm going to go, and copy this guy. And again, kind of the good news, right? Is that the templates are the same. So an item template. This is what I want to display for each item in my repeater. So maybe I want a div. I go in and I divide, de design it from scratch, exactly what I want. So I can put a div in here. And 
And there you see just a bunch of divs that contain those things. Let's say, hypothetically, that this was a ranking of the best pizzas or the best selling pizzas at my, at my company. And I wanted to do an ordered list. All right? Remember that uh, the, the list view gives the facility to create a template easily for an unordered list. But we could make an ordered list if we wanted to. Um, we could go in and... Say for this, <coughs> header template, H1, ranking of favorite pizzas. Displayed where? Or do you think it does? It gets displayed at the very top of um, the very top of that repeater control. And then in the footer template, I can put the end UL tag, or OL tag rather, I'm sorry. And I can make my list item. So what's in the header template? The header template is um, what's going to appear once at the very top of this repeater. What's the item template? The item template is going to be displayed for each row in the data set. What's the footer template? It's what's going to be put in at the very bottom. I could put anything here. I could put a paragraph that says, you know, this ranking based on 2016 sales or something like that. And when I run that, get the H1 at the top, get each item as a list item, and then finally at the very end I get that. So this is one of them, this is this is why I say, you know, don't, uh, you know, I, I don't want to hear that this is how ASP.NET did something, right? Uh, because you always have options, right? And ideally, with uh, the repeater control being so flexible, you shouldn't have to write your own code. Right, because you can, you know, it, it is so flexible and so configurable, you can get it to come up with any sort of structure that you want to. Um, in, in which case, um, yeah, you, you know, you can, uh, you, you know, there, there should be no need for you to write like your own code to do this. Yes. What did you mean by it's not editing? Um, remember, we can we can set a a um, we can set a flag to say allow edits, allow inserts, allow deletes. So we can do that on let's go in and put let's go in and put a insert statement in here. cheat and generate the insert and delete. Right there, I have the option to enable inserting and enable editing. E enable editing. So I can click that and it will allow me to edit this.
I just screwed up my my view. Let's do that one more time. Let's make a tiled and let's make a flow actually. And I'm going to say enable editing. So now I have an edit button there. So if I run this, I can click edit, and there I go. All right. Should be able to go in and edit that. All right. Whereas, even though I've made an insert statement, there's no ability to go in and make, <coughs> make the uh, repeater. Uh, editable. I'm sure there's a reason for that. I don't know. I, I can't think off the top of my head of uh, of why that is. But <laughs> but remember, you always have as a last resort to write your own code. Let me just verify that to be 100% sure, just to make sure I'm not misspeaking. make a repeater field editable. The repeater control does not have an edit template. I would suggest having the edit fields in a hidden placeholder that, yeah, that that's essentially writing your own. Can be done. This can be done, but a data list control is more straightforward and just as easy to use. But someone did it. You can always you can always bet that almost whatever coding problem that you run into, someone has encountered it or has did it or has figured out a solution or has figured out a solution that actually doesn't work uh, as well. So it's important to test things out when you see things like this. Questions on this. So now you've got three choices for displaying lists of data. The grid view, the list view, and the repeater. Um, and they, they offer, and the order I list them in is the order of ease in using them. Grid view is going to be the most straightforward. List view, got a little bit more work to do, but you have more flexibility. Repeater, you have a little bit more work to do, but you have even more flexibility. Questions about this? Before we go on to the next topic, students at the beginning of class, we're discussing how to make word wrap in Visual Studio. And I have to admit, I didn't know the answer to that. You know what word wrap is, right? Right now, this scrolls off to the side where you should be able to wrap it around. How do you do that? I don't know. You guys do. Up in tools. <laughs> Up in tools. Options down at the bottom. Uh huh. And then you scroll down in that left pane. Scroll down in this the pane? Left. Yeah, the left. Yeah. And then it's text editor. You drop that down. Okay. And then general. Right. Oh, you go all languages. You drop that down. All languages. General for that one. Uh, the word drop. And then you have word wrap. Yay. You also have line numbers that you can show. Um, let's put it this way. If this was on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, it wouldn't be better hidden than, than, than this. So now we click that, and we get line numbers, and we get word wraps. And in fact, it shows you the little indication that this is word wrapped. So that's actually useful in lecturing because a lot of times I have to scroll over to the side uh, to do things where, um, and so if you want to do that, that is useful as well. All right. So yay, good call on that. I didn't even know you could do that. All right. Okay. Now, what we talked about so far, like yes, uh, last class and today, was about doing lists of data like more than one piece of data. Like I do a query and I get a group of items. 
and it, it was essentially alternatives to the grid view. Now we're going to look at the alternative to the details view. And there's one alternative to the details view, and that is the form view. All right? So I'm going to create a new page. And I'm going to put a form view on it. By the way, there is another concern with these alternatives that you use, and that is how much server resources that they take up. All right, how much, what's the processing time, uh, you know, uh, and, and memory and resources taking up. What would you think has the more resources? A grid view or a repeater? Which would you say would take up more resources, a grid view or a repeater? Grid view, right. Yeah, grid view. Why would you say that? Because uh, most of the stuff's like built in. Yeah, the more the server's doing for you, the more it's going to take. The less the server does for you, you then only implement the stuff that you absolutely need. All right? Because there's a lot of things with grid view that we, we could change that we didn't even look at, right? So that, all those resources are there. So um, that was another thing as I was researching for this, I saw um, there was like, you know, graphs that showed the performance of these. In simple words, we can say performance for a repeater is bet far better than a grid view. Um, I actually did see graphs. I don't know where those were. Performance for a re repeater is better than a data list, which is better than a grid view. All right, I'm not going to stare at the graphs because they don't, aren't really that big of a deal anyhow. But anyhow, just so you know, that that could be a consideration. Um, how do I want to say this? Performance. Uh, performance is always an issue in software, right? And it becomes a bigger issue as things get bigger, as your application gets bigger, as you get more visitors to your site, as you have more data, and so on. One thing that you hear oftentimes is, is people discussing about uh, uh, the ability of an application to scale, all right? Is this scalable? What that simply means is it's easy to write applications that work for, you know, um, for, for two pizza orders in the, in the test database, all right? But what if this is an actual, what if this is Domino's and there were hundreds of, of orders a, 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 an hour, all right? Not necessarily at an individual dominoes, but you know, um, throughout throughout an area or throughout the country, um, that becomes that can become a bigger issue. So that can be definitely a consideration. Uh, there's some things that we did not talk about. Um, one of the book series that I have, I think, is good because they have a chapter devoted to the stuff that they don't talk about. All right, because we can't cover everything in a semester, right? But one of the things, for example, you can do is you can, you can page data. In other words, instead of showing every single order, you can choose to show, show 10 at a time. All right, and, and so on. All right, so let's create, a, let's create this, uh, our form, form view, and let's create um, our data source. Just for laughs, I'm going to pick a different table. I'm going to pick the um, toppings table. I'm going to generate the inserts, updates, and deletes. I'm then going to create a form view. And I can choose my data source. 
and I can edit templates. And notice I have the uh, item template, the footer template, the edit item template. So I'm sort of back to um, what I was with uh, the details view. The item, the header template again is something that's going to appear at the very top of this. So I could put, you know, now would I go and run this. It shows me all of them. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong page. I was kind of surprised it showed me all of them. Form view. All right, it showed me one. All right. And again, we can look at the HTML that it generates. My guess is that it uses ugly break tags. And it does. Use a table, even worse. for a minute. If I wanted to, all right, I'm trying to think of how to word this. Now that I've seen it, this is that, that it does it this way. Um, I think I had seen it before, but I forgot about it. I thought it gave, I thought it did something else. Um, let's look. Can we configure that? In other words, are we stuck with the table or not? We'll never know because we're stuck looking at the wheel spinning. Okay, there we go. Let's run this again. I'm going to go and I'm going to save the source to this.
save as. You can save it as a complete web page, so you can save the HTML. Why do you think I'm doing this? What do you think I'm going to do with that HTML file? Pardon me? Reference for CSS is one good reason to do that. All right? So, yeah, absolutely. That would be to do that. Another reason, though, is I'm going to run this through the validator. All right? I'm going to go to W3 schools and run this through the validator. Because in my mind, that looks like horrible code. All right? So, let's see what the validator has to say. Maybe I'm mistaken. All right? It's happened once. I'm trying to remember the last time. Actually, Tuesday. So, here's the web page. I'm going to go edit it in Notepad. And I'm going to search, or I'm going to select all. I'm going to go to the W3 or validator. And I'm going to try to validate that source. Surprisingly, there is less errors in it than I thought. So maybe my maybe my concerns are. Um, are ill-founded. I do believe there are some accessibility issues in this, though. If I look, there's no table. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no labels for this, right? If you've had the HTML class, you know how label tags are important because label tags are for accessibility. They show the screen reader what label belongs with what. Um, belongs with what um, um, element, all right? Also, you don't use a table for this. You don't use a table with break tags for this, all right? How do you show a table? How do you represent, I'm sorry, how do you represent a form? Typically, the best way to represent a form so it's accessible and looks good is to use an unordered list where each element of the table is in an LI element. And each LI has a label to it, and it has the form control. All right, we did that in CISS 216. All right, now, I could get this, but not using the form view. I could get this if I used a list view. All right, but wait. A list view shows more than one thing. True. But if I guaranteed through the where clause that I would only select one topping, then my list would contain exactly one item. So, you could use list view actually as a detail view. And then you would have the flexibility to make the form to look the way that you wanted to. All right? You could make the form look the way that you wanted to and um, code it such that each form item was in an LI tag, you had a label that was associated with your form control, and so on and so forth. So that list view is valuable even more for lists. And remember, since list views are editable, and you can insert with them and delete with them, um, you have the ability to do that as well. So a list view can actually sh a, a list view can actually be a substitute with a details view, provided you give your SQL query some parameter that's going to make sure that only one thing gets returned. All right. So uh, again, I don't like the way this code is. I suppose it works, but. My alternative would be to use a list view. I could then configure the form and write the HTML for the form the way I wanted it to the way I wanted it to be. I could still do the insert, update, and delete, and 
then I would be um, uh, all set and I would have the best of both worlds, if that makes sense to you. All right. Um, I believe in a list view you can do an insert. Um, let's Google that to be sure. Yeah, there's a there's a insert item template, so there must be the ability to do that. That's another advantage that a list view has over a grid view, by the way. You can't do an insert on a grid view. All right. So where did this leave us? I know I threw a lot of information over the last two classes. The idea is, is to use this in a way that will make the project, make the project the best that you can be. I don't expect you to be experts in making all of these, right? We just went through these fairly quickly over the last two classes. But this should at least open your eyes to that you have alternatives from the basic details view and grid view. So do what makes sense for your project. I don't want to hear that that's the way ASP.NET did it, all right, because you do have options to do it different ways, all right. The one thing I've noticed on some of the assignments, and I've been a little bit flexible about this, but some people have assignments where they have to do things in a very specific order, like you can log on and when you log on, then you go and do a review. Well, I might not want to do a review every time I log on, right? I might want to come to a page that says, all right, you're logged on, here are the things you can do, and then choose those things, all right? For the regular assignments, since they were very piecemeal and I, you know, we, we were doing them one little section at a time, that's less of a big deal. But for your project, this is a chance for you to bring everything together. It should make sense to you. You've all been on websites and have used them. All right, and know what works well for you and what doesn't work well. So as you're doing this, think in terms like, does the flow that a user would have to go through to do a task make sense? Um, the one thing that would be really good, and I'll possibly add it in future semesters, would be a requirement for you to do develop uh, use cases. Does anyone know what a use case is? If I say, like, do a use case. You know, what are your use cases in testing this? A use case is a typical thing that a user might want to do. All right? And it's, it's not like just testing something like, you know, a, 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 unit, a unit test plan will have something like, <laughs> we're validating the number of stars so that they're less than, um, so that there are a number between one and five. That's testing something very specific. A use case will be, a user logs on, a user saw a movie, they want to log on and leave a review for it. So that's a typical thing that, you know, that someone might use your system for. That would be one use case. So user goes, logs on, enters a review for a movie. Can they do that? And more importantly, not, can, not just can they do that, can they do that in a flow that makes sense, that's reasonable? Or do they have to log on, click the back button three times, refresh the page, <coughs> click the hidden link over on the left side, and so on? Does it do it in a logical way that makes sense? Another use case, for example, for the film one would be the user wants to look up a film, all right, to see what the reviews for it have been so far. So log on, log on or not log on, right, because you can see reviews without logging on. Search for a movie by title or by category. Pick the movie, boom, <laughs> see the reviews or see the average review or something like that. So think in terms of, even though I didn't require it, think in terms of use cases. Typical things that a user would do when visiting your page. And not just does it work, but is the flow something that makes sense. And my hope is by showing you these ways that you can get out of the, the basic grid De uh, details view uh, uh, examples that we were doing for the first part, that, that gives you a lot more flexibility in designing your pages so you can make it work really the way that you want to. All right. Uh, Tuesday, we will discuss, uh, I'll, I'll take any questions you have about projects, assignments. Um, we will cover AJAX um, on a conceptual level and, and then we'll get into actually implementing it. And... <laughs> 
No, no. What, what you're going to do is, is after you see Ajax at ASP.net, you're going to shoot me because <laughs> the case is it's so much simpler because the framework does a lot of the work for you. All right. In the 232 class, which you're taking, you got to do everything, right? Here, the framework handles it, and you don't. You just sit back and collect the paychecks, right? All right. So we'll cover that on on Tuesday. All right. See you uh, in lab. <laughs>